Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today we're going to be working on our 2007 Suzuki GSXR 1000. Now what are we going to be looking at? Well, we're going to look at a no-start condition. I know electrical scares most people to death, but I promise you, it's not that tough. So, let me go grab a couple of tools and we'll start digging into this. Do not be afraid. This is only going to be a skill level one. Now, what tools are you going to need to accomplish this? Well, basically, just a ratchet, a four millimeter, a pair of needle nose pliers, and most importantly, a test light. So not a long list. Now, as far as the parts, if you would, reference our parts diagrams. That'll give you an overview of what we're going to look at and where they're located on the machine. And if you determine that one of yours has failed, you'll know where to go back and get it ordered. So, once you've got your tools together and you've looked over the exploded parts diagram, I'll take you over there and show you how to do it. All right, so let's start, or let's see why it won't start. Flip it on and there's absolutely nothing there. Well, first place we need to head is under the seat. So remove those two bolts on the side and just lift it out of the way. So what are we looking for in here? Well, first thing we need to check is the, uh, the battery. Now listen, I already know this battery is in tip-top shape, but if you're not sure about yours, reference the, the video that we have for testing the battery. That'll get you uh, over that hump. All right, beyond that, if we know we've got voltage here and we know the ground and the, uh, the positive are, are tightened down tight, nothing's going on up here. All right, the first place you want to look is this little starter solenoid that is hid right up under the tail section. All right. In there, you've got this plastic cover. So you want to lift that off, and the first thing you want to check is the condition of that fuse. So grab your test light, put it on your negative. All right, you've got it flipped on, nothing's going on. Well, we need to go ahead and zero in on this, uh, this fuse. Do we have battery voltage or coming up top? Yes, we do. We should have it over there as well, and we don't. So let's check this fuse on this side but nothing on the other. So that's telling me that that fuse is probably blown. And the filament is indeed burned in half. You can see straight through it. So Suzuki is nice enough to include a spare inside this little plastic cover. Pop it out, go in. Look at there, she's alive now. All right, that was a simple fix. Sometimes it's not so simple. So what do you do next? You've uh, checked your battery, it's good to go. You turn it on, it lights up like it's supposed to, but you hit the switch and it's still not kicking it over. Well, here's what you need to look for next. We want to actually check the operation of our actual starter relay. So it's an item that can fail, and I'm going to show you how to test it. So what we want to see here is there to be power transmitted when I push the start button on the yellow and green wire. Now what you want to listen for is the actual relay to click because what it's going to do is it's going to energize and bring up a contactor which is going to basically connect the battery wire with the wire that's heading down to the starter. Now what I've done so the bike doesn't start is I just disconnected that wire because I want you to be able to hear the relay and with the bike trying to start up you wouldn't be able to. So we're going to watch here is the, it to light up the test light on that yellow wire and then you're going to hear it actually engage the starter relay. All right, you hear that? And now you're seeing the, uh, the light light up. All right, one last test to make sure the relay is uh, or the contactor is working properly. We should see power right there when we hit it. And that's indeed what's happening. So that tells me three things, that this switch is working correctly, that it's getting power to this location on the, uh, the, the starter relay, and that the starter relay contactor is actually engaging and sending power down to the starter. Now if you've got all of that going on and there's still, it's still not turning over, chances are it's going to be your starter. There's one final circuit that I want to show you and it's really easy to test. If all that's working out and she's still not starting up, 
need to look at your, uh, your clutch switch. Now it actually operates uh, by completing a circuit that's just grounded. So what you want to do is take your test light and connect the clip side of it to a positive. Actually, I'm running up to the uh, starter solenoid. So turned on and then we go to the top connection. It's just a pair of wires that head up there. The top one is one we're after. And what will happen is this will light up if it completes the ground. Boom, there it is. So that tells me that that internal switch for the, uh, the clutch is actually working. Well, listen, this is just a few quick things you can check using only a test light. I mean, obviously, an electrical system on a unit of this caliber is much more complicated than that. But this will give you some of the high-level pieces that you can look at that may get you back on the road. Now, is it, if it gets tougher than this, well, that's when you start digging into the schematic and considering problems with ECMs and loose grounds throughout your machine. So you can leave us a question in the comment section below and we'll try to help you out, although we cannot guarantee that we can diagnose everything via the internet. So that being said, if you need any of the parts that you discovered had failed on your machine, come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. Once again, leave us questions and we will do our best to answer them below. And until next time, we just want to say thanks for watching.